All right. Are you all ready to go for day two of the Open Hardware Summit? How's everybody feeling? Yes? Is everybody feeling a little bit like it's raining and it's early and you haven't done any of your stretches yet or don't have enough coffee? Yeah. Okay. So we're all going to stand up. We're all going to stretch up to the sky. Oh, a little bit this way. Yeah. A little bit that way. There you go. Maybe do like one of those like knee bends that I've seen people do in shows that exercise. Or, like one of these if there's room in your row. One of those. Oh, does that feel good? Right? Okay, good. Everybody feel a little bit more awake? Maybe do a wiggle. Yeah. This is like Alicia post-toddlers. Like I have children now. We wiggle. We do things like that at this conference. All right. Everybody feeling good? Okay. All right. Let's get started. So this is day two of the Open Hardware Summit. We often only have one day, so this is pretty exciting. Um, and I just want to start out, I know they're not in the room, but if you all want to convey the message that in this room, our summit organizers were thanked and uh, appreciated and praised, actually Lee is right here. So. <laughs> Um, so I just want to say a huge thank you to our summit team, Lee and Claire and Sid, um, and all of our volunteers who have helped as well. You all have been amazing, but um, I've been working with those three people for two years now. They did the virtual summit last year, and they all did the this summit where you all are this year. So if you have compliments, you should give them to those people out there at the front desk. <laughs> you are amazing. All right, so I'm going to talk to you about the state of open hardware. Um, it's kind of a really exciting time in open hardware because we just continue to get more and more traction from a really diverse subset of people, which is really exciting to me. And this is the 2023 edition. If you go on our website, we have a state of open hardware that was from 2021, um, and a lot has changed since then. So in the last three years, I kind of wanted to highlight a few things that have happened because in the last three years, we've been virtual. And so we haven't really been able to celebrate these things in person. First of all, the summit, this thing that you are at, turned 10, which it's now 13, but let's celebrate 10. Yeah. It's been, it's been a decade of summits. Um, and the first one happened right here in NYC. And so that's why we wanted to bring this one back to NYC to kind of come full circle for our decade. Ashwa also turned 10. It's now 11. So we had a 10th birthday. And then this year, the Summit Fellowship turns 10. So this was called the Ada Lovelace Fellowship. Um, in the beginning, and we recently changed it just to be like more descriptive of exactly what fellowship that is, because you know, sure, Ada Lovelace was a fantastic person in the 1800s who was the first computer programmer, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot. Uh, so we changed it to Summit Fellowship so that we could like really, you know, be descriptive of of what this was. So it turned 10 this year. Yes. Um, and we have um, a number of fellows here as well. Um, this fellowship um, pays travel stipends so that people can come to the summit who wouldn't other be, otherwise be able to, people from underrepresented and marginalized populations. And then also, Oshawa became a sustainable organization. This year, thank you to Sloan and the funding that we received. Um, so for the first time, in our history, um, we have been able to pay our employee, which is me. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, and we've been able to pay several contractors. We've really been able to kind of step up our game and have real programs that haven't just been a labor of love for myself, our board members, and our other volunteers. So there's been a lot of volunteering behind the scenes at Ashwa, and I don't know that that's always been apparent. But thank you to the Sloan Foundation for the funding um, because we wouldn't really be where we are this year without them. All right, so speaking of Ashwa's programs, um, obviously we have the Open Hardware Summit, which is where we're at. This is kind of how Ashwa started, was the summit and needing a, a basically a bank account for all the sponsors to put their money in, right? 
Um, and then out of that stemmed the fellows program that I just uh, told you about for the for the summit, where we were able to give travel funding. Um, we really want to grow this summit as or the the summit fellowship as well into travel funding plus maybe some some kind of like stipend or some sort of thing that kind of maybe bootstraps a business a little bit or whatever they're doing with hardware. I think one of the other really great things about this fellowship is that it is funded by your tickets, right? So the extra money that we have left over, the super attendees who pay um, the, the maximum price for their ticket, that is how we fund the fellowship and that's how we're able to give travel stipends. So um, that's been that's been a really awesome program to get people into hardware. Um, they also have like mentor talks that they do. There's a sub there's a subset of fellows who become mentors. Um, one of the really exciting things we've seen from this fellowship is actually a fellow who then became a mentor who now has a workshop here at this um, conference. So um, it's really come full circle. And then a few years ago, we started Open Hardware Month. So Open Hardware Month is kind of a way of, the, like, you know, open hardware, it's all about distributed manufacturing, yada, yada. And we were like, okay, how can we do that with the Open Hardware Summit, right? Like this, oops, there's a global population of, you know, open hardware when you do a, a distributed manufacturing. So how do we get conferences all over the world too, um, or, or at least meetups, local things that are easier than conferences? So we started Open Hardware Month so that everybody kind of said, oh, okay, there's a month where I do the open hardware thing. I get together with friends at a bar. I have a little, you know, meetup in my hacker space about open hardware. I can do these things. So wherever you are in the world, um, you can participate in Open Hardware Month, and we publish your event on our calendar, and we tell people to go to it and all that kind of thing. So that's in October. Um, and then around the same time, we started the certification program. How many people have open hardware certifications in the audience? Nice. Excellent. So, um, and I've heard a lot of people uh, giving talks saying like, hey, certify your project. And so I will tell you again, certify your project. Um, so we started the, the certification program because of uh, community feedback was continuously like, hey, the open hardware gear logo is great but there's like, there's kind of no legal teeth behind it, right? And there's also um, no way to really tell if that's truly open source hardware or if people just like the logo or they like the words open source hardware and it's a nice marketing term and it helps them get more sales, right? So we kind of created this thing to really make sure that we, um, when we when we have this a certified piece of hardware, the source has been checked, we know where it is, uh, it's complete, um, and then, we give you a certification because you know, you've checked all the boxes, right? So that um, is a country code and a specific number that you get with your hardware. Um, and I am going to tell you even more about it in a minute. Um, and then we've got the uh, the trails, Trailblazers in Academia program. And that is uh, funded through the Sloan Foundation. And that is um, really what we got all of the funding for Oshawa through. So that program just started last year, um, and we are going to have our trailblazers on stage, and we're going to recognize some people in a minute, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it at that point. But it's a really exciting program, and I'm super excited as to how it is getting more and more ac academics into the field of open hardware. All right, so the certification. This is how it's grown, and this uh, is, is only about five years old. So we have over 2,000 certifications already. We have certifications from 58 different countries and six continents. So if you know any scientists working in Antarctica, we need a certification from Antarctica. <laughs> Help us out. Um, there is a Mastodon bot for certifications now. So when you certify, we give you a little push out to that. Um, there's all kinds of hardware getting certified. So I love to say that hardware is anything with atoms rather than bits. And we really, really mean that. Um, we have had like tent straps, like camping straps and hammocks certified before. Um, we've got all kinds of things, including uh, we recently just got perfume certified. Um, and I put the certification numbers up there if anybody wants to look it up and, and uh, you know, make a derivative. Um, there's also been a huge uptick in certifications affiliated with academic papers, and I am 
hoping that its potential, um, having a trailblazers program, having more and more people in the academic community doing open hardware, that this could be um, a reason why. So the URL is up there. Get your certification, certification.ashwa.org. All right. So for this next slide, I need everybody to take out your phones um, and take a picture of this QR code. Um, this is kind of just from the Social and Communication Center of Oshawa. Um, so we are officially on Mastodon now. We've got um, not only the bot that, that pushes all the certifications out, but we also have just the general Open Source Hardware Association Mastodon. Um, we also started cross-posting with Gosh and the Internet of Production to cross-post cross announcements on our forums. We still have Twitter as well, so you can still find us there. Um, but also, we want your feedback about this summit and future summits and about a little bit of a web redesign that we are working on. Um, it's five questions long, the survey. It's probably going to take you five minutes to do. And we would love if everybody in the audience uh, would take our survey. And I will be personally bugging you about it for the rest of the day as well. And just in case I went to the next slide too fast and you didn't get that QR code, there it is again. So talking about the summit and the summit fellows, um, in, in the 10 years that we have had the summit fellow program, we have now this year, we've now had 100 Summit Fellows go through our program. We've helped 100 people um, get to the summit. So it's pretty awesome. And again, we want your feedback. So here's the QR code and the survey. Um, at the summit this year, too, I also think it's really incredible. Again, this whole thing about you know open hardware being about distributed manufacturing. Well, what have we done? Oops, we've created a distributed community all across the globe. Um, people who bought tickets to the summit this year represented 26 different countries and 37 states. So yeah, incredible. Um, so there are people from all around the globe here. Um, there are also virtual watchers who also purchased a ticket. Um, so we're trying to, you know, we've always had the, the, the virtual summit, but we're also trying to add ways of, you know, being able to communicate with us, like our Discord channel and things like that. Um, so we've always been trying to kind of, you know, get more and more people, be more inclusive to who we can reach and any areas of the world that we happen to be. So take our survey. It asks you a bunch of questions about future summits. And then I also want to thank our summit sponsors in a great big way. So the summit would not be feasible or we wouldn't be able to put the summit on without our sponsors. So our visionary sponsors, the Engelberg Center, who allowed us space here, um, and SparkFun, who made your awesome badges. We've got our fanatic sponsor, Make. Our enthusiast sponsors, BeagleBoard, Hackster, DigiKey, ThingM, CrowdSupply, iFixit, and Ultimachine. And our supporters, Olamex, Pinoco, QuickLogic, Hackaday, Lulzbot, Tapster, JK Embedded, LDM Motors, um, Opulo, Adafruit, Arduino, ShopBot, OSH Park, uh, Pulse Sensor, Drone Code, PCB Way, Tindy, No Starch Press, Informal, Circle Phone, Silicon Valley Robotics, Scope of Work, and Framework. Thank you all so much for sponsoring the... Oh my God, what? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I guess thank you sponsors and thank you me. Um, <laughs> thank you, Michael. I have a feeling that uh, Michael's also the person backstage running this whole, yeah, AV thing. Michael has also been the board president for a lot of years. Um, and so thank you, Michael. <laughs> All right, okay. so. Um, as the open hardware community is, we all know, we all know, not everybody else in the world knows, but we all know that when you create something, it's not just one person sitting in their garage like a genius inventor, right? We all know the real story is it takes a team. And for open hardware to really be proliferated through the world, it also takes a team. 
And so I wanted to recognize some of the other nonprofits doing work in this space that is super important. Um, I gave them all the opportunity to have a one minute slide. Real quick, I'm gonna have all of them come on up to the stage. Um, and they're all gonna tell you about what they've been doing in open hardware. Um, come on up. Okay, I'll get going. Hey, everybody, I'm here representing GOSH right now, the gathering for open science hardware. Um, <laughs> did you know that there's people out there who just like love looking at bugs and like want to know what like dirt's up to and things like that and like what's going on like under the water? Um, there's bubbles, bubbles even, even science bubbles. It's fantastic. Um, GOSH is like, one of just the most fantastic communities I've ever gotten to be with. They have an incredible forum. Uh, it's a decentralized group just making science hardware. If you have something that you're working on that's interesting, you can totally post on the forum and be like, hey, is this useful for science? And some science folks will be like, yeah, we totally want to use this to make science bubbles. You know, just an example. Um, <laughs> but it's been super successful. It's just, if you like the group of people in here, you're gonna love meeting up with the thousands of people in GOSH internationally um, that are just doing amazing stuff. And there's been super successful like spin-off groups like uh, that are regional like Africa OSH and Regosh in Latin America. It's amazing, check out GOSH. I don't have nearly as much energy. <laughs> Uh, I'm Allison Parker. I'm representing as a board member the uh, Open, Open Science Hardware Foundation, which is a registered nonprofit that's working in close collaboration with GOSH. Um, we were newly renamed as the governance of GOSH and the foundation Evolve. Um, so the foundation's goals include strengthening institutional support and public policy and benefit of open science hardware, accelerating the adoption of open science hardware by the scientific community, as well as fiscally sponsoring uh, open science hardware projects in communities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so right now, things like an um, events funding call for groups wanting to host an event or workshop, focusing specifically on promoting or advancing open science hardware within a specific scientific discipline. So come talk to us. Shannon's here um, and, of course, others around the world. So love to hear your input on that. Hello, everybody. Uh, maybe some of you are academics who have to occasionally also write papers because somehow certified open hardware on its own is not as compelling to deans and provosts worldwide. I don't know. Um, so we have the Journal of Open Hardware. It's a real sell. Um, the Journal of <laughs> yeah. the Journal of Open Hardware uh, was started by. Luis and Toby, uh, also a long time ago, and just uh, slowly publishes things that um, pertain to open hardware. So if you designed and distributed a piece of open hardware, you could write a paper about it, or if you have some meta insights about hardware that you wanted to um, investigate and share. We're always looking for reviewers, editors, you could be editor in chief, um, but it's a, it's a home for open hardware. Um, Alicia is on the board, so, you know, it must be good. That's all. <laughs> Hello. I'm Sarah Hutton from the Internet of Production Alliance. Um, it's a nonprofit located in Copenhagen with a humanitarian focus on building open infrastructures that allow for anybody anywhere to participate in production. We've been collaborating with Oshawa, Gig, Gosh, uh, Wikifactory, Open Toolchain Foundation, many, many more. We have over 16 new members um, around the globe over just the past year alone. One of our main areas of focus is on the provision of practical and accessible knowledge so that you can make anything. We work on uh, looking at issues surrounding intellectual property, uh, developing open tooling, establishing data standards for portability and interoperability of design files between platforms, specifically to support distributed manufacturing. 
We're gener generously funded by the Sloan Foundation um, Next Generation Internet's Data Portability and Services Accelerator, or NGI DAPSI, and the Make African European Maker Innovation Project, which supports our continuing research and development on open standards that you may have heard of before, open uh, know where, open know how. Um, we are currently engaging in research and development on the people and skills uh, specifications that are necessary to produce um, materials across uh, ecosystems between Europe and Africa. This year, we are excited to have been receiving additional funding from UK Aid and Research and Innovation Systems for Africa, which will support increasing research capacity um, and autonomous production capability in nine maker spaces across Ghana, Kenya, and South Africa. Uh, we have also received funding from Code for Science and Society to accelerate our work on open governance models um, to support our growing infrastructure in, in a participatory and collaborative way. Um, we have several ongoing research and development projects that are listed here. That gigantic QR code I would love for you to scan and hop onto our community forum where you can join in conversations. We're always looking for more collaborators throughout the maker community as we try to bridge the divide between the open community and industry. Thanks. I'm back. <laughs> Representing another organization, the Wilson Center, which, and we're honored to be included in this list of nonprofits for open hardware. Um, we're a quasi-federal think tank. so. We're in DC, we sit sort of at the intersection of public policy organizations and you all, expert communities, academia, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we look at sort of emerging issues and opportunities in science and technology, including open source hardware. Um, so keep an eye out for some upcoming stuff. We have a policy brief on opportunities for open hardware in environmental monitoring, which we did in collaboration with the Open Environmental Data Project. Um, a report on flagship programs, so like examples of the federal government being involved in both low cost and open source hardware. Um, and a collaboration with GOSH looking at uh, key topics related to sort of open hardware in the open science conversation with a policy perspective. So again, would love to talk to any of you, especially with interest in policy or thinking about sort of the intersection of science policy and open hardware. Thank you. And then we have somebody who is uh, unable to be here, but attending virtually. Um, Joshua Pierce, if he was here, he'd be up here also uh, talking about Hardware X, um, which is another journal that publishes open hardware research papers um, in academia. Uh, so if you want to choose, if this is amazing that we get a choice, isn't it, right? Like, you can publish in Hardware X or you can publish in the Journal of Open Hardware. It's amazing. So. Um, Please, uh, if you're in academia, use these journals, publish in these journals, become an editor, all that good stuff. So thank you so much to our community of people who have like been here doing stuff in the entire world, right? Because, you know, if you're at this conference, you know, probably it's most likely that you're a tinkerer or a maker or an engineer um, and you just love making things, right? But if we don't have the policy people to make these changes, if we don't have the people that are creating the communities around here, then you're still just kind of sitting alone in your garage doing these things. So I think it's really important to recognize that communities, policies, all that kind of stuff, journal, academic journals, um, take all kinds of different people to make this world go round with open hardware. All right, so this is the part of the, the program where we're gonna talk a little bit more about the trailblazers in academia. I know, I'm going over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so once again, thank you to the Sloan Foundation who has made this possible. Our Trailblazers in Academia program, we put out there to answer such questions as like, how do you talk to your dean about open hardware? Is your dean open hardware friendly or not? How do you talk to your tra transfer office about open hardware? And are they going to just be like, no, you have to patent your thing? Do you have a choice? What on earth is this whole open hardware thing even? Um, and, you know, like all the different questions in academia from all the different offices in academia, right? We know it's a huge system and we're basically trying to turn the Titanic around, right? Trying to take this enormous system that's embedded in not open source, that's embedded in, um, you know, 
history and tradition and ways of doing things and really try to make it make it different. Um, so in, a, in as much as we are trying to share the things that all of the people in open hardware are doing, um, we put out a call for, uh, for our, our Trailblazer program um, about a year ago. And we chose nine amazing academics who are already doing um, open hardware and who need to be recognized for the open hardware that they are doing. Um, and they are helping us pull this whole Titanic, this whole uh, university program into a whole new world of open hardware. And they are all going to have finished products in about a month or so um, that will also help other academics understand how to do things in their fields, in their how to do open hardware in academia. So I'm going to bring up uh, really my like the other half of my brain, Lysia Ducton. Um, and Lysia has been the project manager um, for this and has just done a, such an amazing job helping me out wrangle all these trailblazers and our mentors. Come on up. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we want to recognize all of our fellows who've worked very diligently to make sure open hardware is recognized, not only in open source hardware, but in academia as well. Our trailblazers have made sure that they check in with us. They keep us updated on what they're doing as far as their presentations, the students they mentor, the professors they meet with, as well as the deans they let know about open source hardware to get, get the program really on the map and show how sustainable this field is and how amazing they actually are with their work and how much of a difference it makes, not only in open source hardware, but with diversity and creating opportunities for many students didn't even know this existed. So we definitely want to give a round of applause to them for being so amazing. <laughs> And I'm going to ask the fellows to come up as I call their name as we have certificates for them and as well as amazing lapel pins that Alicia had made. <laughs> Carlotta Berry. S. Wu. <laughs> She's here in spirit. <laughs> Jonathan Balkin. Kevin a celery. <laughs> Congrats. You can come up this way if you like. Sure, we're good. Manu Prakash. Juja Marka. <laughs> Anne Marie Thomas. Mark Tichito. Yes. 
And Doll Winters. Becca Sharp. <laughs> Ryan Trujillo. And we have one more for Ryan to accept on behalf of Miriam Langer, who could not be here with us today. <laughs> yes. Yes. And at this time, we also want to acknowledge all of the mentors who are here and ask them to come onto the stage as well. And we also want to acknowledge the students who worked with our fellows, a part of their project. Uh, the first student is Xavier Kaur, who worked with SWU on her project. The next student is Alejandra Larengola. Excuse me if I said that wrong. And Alexander Ose. So thank you all of you for the projects that you have completed and made. And we ask that you come on stage for one group photo. All right. Yes.